Before I get into some of my questions, I wanted, if you don't mind, I'm going to start with a fan question. This particular fan would like for me to ask you, what is the best Steely Dan song to listen to while you're ripping across Lake George with your buddy water skiing on the back? Oh, man. Did Jack ask you to say that? <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> oh. I, real, I mean... Reeling in the ears. Um, <laughs> my old school, we just had the best time in Lake George. He's the man. What yeah, a king. I agree. love that fellow. Me too. What most struck me about your film is, um, for one, it's it's 90 minutes and it has to accomplish a lot. Establish mm -hmm. relationships and individuals and set up a thrilling but complex plot. And you, and you do so with such naturalism, if I may say. Uh, we don't have to have a heavy expositional scene to establish much of this. It's like we're dropped into the moment of, in this moment of time, it unfolds like we would experience it in real life. So how did you come to this realization that you can take like a, I don't know what the word is for it, but like a fast track to characterization with little moments, like moments that seem so insignificant, but they have power, such as commenting on someone's necklace. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, always, that's like the hardest part I find with writing and especially with trying to deliver on genre needs and expectations, like, like we sort of present in this film or try to set up, you know, you realize why in movies sometimes you have just these exposition dumps because it's like, okay, well, if we get that out of the way, then we can go to next what we want to do. I think that for us is really a movie about a character coming out of paralysis, you know, a character who's been sort of mourning the death of their son since before their son was dead and somebody who, when that happens and through the sort through the girlfriend, through Paige's character is able to start moving, is able to start sort of, she's not somebody who's incredibly expressive. She's not saying, this is how I feel. This is how I this, this is how I that. She is sort of like stuck in space in a way, you know? And so for us, that was one, what made it sort of feel a little bit more like the, the sort of noir films that we were kind of riffing on also is this kind of character who's stuck and just trying ultimately finding some piece of trying to find some piece of objective truth that 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 makes sense in this nutty world you know but it also went into sort of like the aesthetics of the film of why we wanted to shoot in Albany how we wanted to present it you know there's or after she's seen his, um Michael and they walk out into the sort of courtyard of the morgue. You know, that was a scene where we debated a lot whether it should be this sort of like breakdown emotional scene where we get all this backstory and all that. But staying true to that sort of idea of this character who isn't grieving the way that we want a mother to be grieving. You know, it's like, and that's a very brave thing for Hillary to do, to say like, no, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to make you like me right away because I'm grieving the appropriate way. Yeah, yeah. Um, to us, that was what was interesting about it and what would what made it sort of different. And in order to sort of show that the frozenness of that grief, it was about using the camera to sort of paint her into that corner in a way, you know, and then the style of the movie does sort of open up once she begins to let herself engage with things, you know, and Paige kind of helps push her um into movement per se yeah yeah this is a common question that i tend to ask filmmakers but when it's a really great film like this there's i can't help but notice like the poetry in it like there's so many lines in here that um that i found myself writing down you, you have some visual moments such as one with a cigarette that has like a full circle moment in it in, in the film but then there are just like lines such as it involves like um someone having a conversation with another person and talking about like what is it like being married to a cop versus like what is it like being married to some, uh, someone who is a junkie and, and yeah, the yeah. common ground between that and so do, do you and your co-writer like it, just consume poetry what is your relationship with poetry and how did that inform both the writing and the visual style that you already talked about yeah i mean 
I def my this is I think the two things are separate. My relationship to poetry is very intimate because my dad is a poet, and so I have poetry readings all the time, and so we're very much within that world. That said, I think that line I don't remember who wrote it. It might have been Madison, I, but I think that what it's sort of like it's rare that you get to have these two kinds of characters. Or with these two backstories and these two di very different lives in a way having a conversation and instead of um finding the obvious sort of differences in that i think that there there is something much more powerful in that scene about finding the harmony in it you know mm. and finding the fact that like they they both in a way lived in in constant fear of losing their partner you know what i mean to me that's just like any situation like this has incredibly complex emotional things around it you know what i mean like right. in and that sort of you know bringing it in, into reality or into realism in a way um allows us to to do that but but yeah when you can find you know you write a line like that and you go like i don't know if this is going to work maybe it's too you know because sometimes it, you can lean too much in the way of yeah, yeah this is abstract and poetic and whatever but it's not sort of like tethering you to the story or something but that was something i remember seeing olivia say it the first time and the way she's so matter of fact about it and the way it's there i remember like oh yeah that works that's like that doesn't feel moralizing like she doesn't feel like she's saying like cops are junkies like it feels like she's genuinely finding this this moment of you know mm. yeah that sounds like what my life was like for a while yeah so how often were you facing this obstacle of balancing and not trying to you know uh tip the dramatic scales uh, so to speak with something like that that line that you're talking about but there are there are so many moments yeah. throughout like because of the complex emotions that are here it's so easily and i've seen it happen in other films where i'm like what this doesn't feel as natural as i would want it to it feels like somebody like an outsider writing about something that doesn't feel true to them right so what was that like trying to like wrestle with moments that are very intense sometimes and even emotionally intense and you have to say the where where do we draw the line like what feels too much and what feels just right or not enough that was honestly the the balancing of things for this movie to me was the hardest part of it because it's it is writing these sort of different lines and the different genres have different expectations you know and necessitate delivering certain things so we were sort of that was a lot when we were shooting and a lot when we were sort of editing to me, the story and the sort of conspiracy of the story and all of that was always, we wanted to make that really grounded. You know, it, it was sort of like, what if in one of the noirs, it was a mother who was trying to figure out, you know what I mean? Or like, that's sort of how the idea kind of um, emerged. So you, so it's it, it was just a thing to always be aware of. Okay, when, where is, how can we wed the character development with the sort of plot growth? You know, um, how can we also in a movie that's trying to be about paralysis and about a mother who's grieving in a way that seems different or off, you know, or who isn't able to sort of grieve correctly, um, whatever that means. How do you still, how do you make an audience still engage with that? And part of that was using the sort of mystery, but part of that was also letting these characters feel like they're in a real space with real stakes you know in the scene in the community uh in the like community center um where uh the actress karen aldrich gives a sort of monologue about what happened to her yeah. that scene was really about sort of showing that this is a, a person that marissa our main character is a person within a context mm. um and and that that context is sort of what we would kind of always go back to to try to ground it in the place and in you know the world that the characters are coming out of does that make sense yeah 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 i'm glad you brought up that that community center uh, sequence because i feel like it brings together both a, a very poetic moment uh, verbally just the as as a parent like I, I have no idea what it's like to to lose a child but I can relate to that fear and everything of like 
things cracking and uh, stories uh, that, that, that you remember and uh, who you are and who you kid, your kid is like, cause there's so many moments in here. I'm going to go off track a little bit and I'll get back to my original point, but that, that's just how your film uh, affects me where I think about like, Oh, this movie is, is, is intelligent enough to know that probably when someone loses a child, they think about them when they're younger. Like we always register them when they're younger. And so I felt like that was beautifully illustrated in that moment. But also on top of that, you have this really great visual technique that I loved where you're panning around the room and it has to line up perfectly where the person's talking, uh, who, who's uh, leading the discussion and it's talking, it's going through and it just so happens to end up right on this person as they talk. And so what was that like coming, like executing a scene like that, that just seems so, very simple, but it, it, I imagine it took a lot of time to do that. Yeah. You know, that was like, we wanted one to show that this is just it, in a way it could be any of these people has a story like this, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're sort of going through everybody and you're getting also the context of him, the, you know, the guy who, saying that there's new people here there's people we haven't seen so we're sort of getting a little bit of backstory and it was wanting to sort of feel the tension and the silence of the space this story that's not our main character story it doesn't necessarily advance the plot in ways that like it does a little bit at the end but really what you're doing is you're you're sitting and you're engaging with what how our character's story affects the world around her and i think that that's something you know a lot of movies about drug use and movies that I love also, I'm not saying this in like a moralizing way, but like can really fetishize the sort of drug use itself and and the sort of like romanticization of the junkie and things like that. And that was something we really wanted to avoid. We wanted to look at it much more practically and from the perspective of the people who are left kind of um, in its wake, right? But also that, that, that this is a moment where our character is, our lead character is growing through learning and but through listening you know what i mean and engaging within the community that she's a part of as opposed to pulling out from it and isolating and all of those things which is what she's been doing you know i know we're just about out of time and i wanted to ask about uh the transitional moments that you have here because uh you, you work memory into this and it's very important part of the story yeah. like, what, what is the art of like creating these transitional moments that feel very fluid and don't feel like a very abrupt moment where you're like yeah. uh, like so pulled into this mo one scene that when it jumps into another it just feels like ah uh, but it just feels like it's creating this um, yeah moment. that's something we work on a, a lot and is sort of difficult but is you we have ideas for that in the script but then when i'm editing the editor it, that's about finding like like a good example is the one early in the movie from the her leaving the morgue there's this big crossfade to the trees you know mm -hmm. for me like though when if there's no inform if the cut's not telling giving you information in a way from one scene to another you're losing a kind of valuable collision of images that can do a lot so like yeah. that crossfade is like from this like concrete marble floor it's super cold and icy and we just found that it was a really nice way to allude to her growth, what her journey is going to be to fade from that to the sort of completely different natural angles of the trees and stuff like that, you know. So, uh, you know, everyone says it, but a, there, a cut makes its own meaning. And especially when you're cutting to different scenes, there's a lot of power in that. So, you know, especially with a movie that you know you want to keep sleek, you want it to be 90 minutes. You don't want to leave anything on the table there. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and all the home video stuff is actually my home videos of me and Madison, the co-writer from when we were kids, you know, our birthday parties, movies we were making, things like that. Um, to me, the, the, the sort of transitions are really important because they're also like where you can lose energy on the scene or you can, you know. I hope you keep going with this. You're really good at it. Um, Thanks, uh, you have some great work ahead of you. So I look forward to seeing it. I really appreciate that, dude. This is fun.